Welcome to another exciting episode from Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Tia Ayer. Love, Death, and Robots continues to make the viewers sit back and gaze in awe at the wonderful yet violent animated world. And the seventh episode of the third season is no different. It starts on a quaint note that intelligently hides violence and chaos. Titled Mason's Rat, the seventh episode is set in a futuristic Earth and revolves around an elderly farmer who discovers a rat problem in his barn. But things take a jog to the left when Mason realizes that the rats are using tools and weapons against him. Soon, a fierce battle between Mason and the rats comes to life. While the rats stand their ground in the barn, Mason uses heavy artillery on the rats, but the ending of the show is anything but predictable. In this video, we will dive deep into the episode, Mason's Rats, before exploring the ending. Let's begin, shall we? Oh, and by the way, beware of spoilers. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like us, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Love, Death, and Robots Season 3, Episode 7 Recap On a seemingly uneventful day, Mason wakes up and goes about his everyday work, but everything changes for him when he notices a couple of rats running into his barn. He picks up his gun and walks into the barn. Mason shoots a rat, but is shocked and surprised to see that the little rodent is wearing a rudimentary utility belt of sorts. The next thing we know, Mason is looking at an armed rat posse that's not afraid of the old man. One of these armed rats shoots Mason with a miniature crossbow. Mason immediately seeks the help of a pest control company called Trap Tech to care for his pest problem. The salesman from Trap Tech explains that such incidences of mutated and intelligent rats are on the rise throughout the world. We're seeing quite a lot of this lately, Mr. Mason. Evolution. Given that the show is based on a futuristic Earth, it is safe to assume that the rats became more intelligent after feeding on genetically modified crops, which accelerated their evolutionary process to the point that they can now build weapons and tools to defend themselves. The salesman sells a rat killing machine called TT6, an immobile weapon armed with a guided pulse laser that could sense its target up to a distance of a thousand meters. Fixed position guided pulse laser with sensors that can zero a woodlouse at a kilometer. Mason installs six of the beasts in his barn, but tragedy strikes as the weapon kills Mason's cat Susan. Mason buries Susan, sleeps in peace that night, but the next day brings more miseries as he sees one of the rats dismantling the camera on the TT6. It turns out that the rats had figured out a hack, and the TT6 was useless if it lost its eyes, that is, the cameras. You clever little bastard. Naturally, Mason contacted Trap Tech once again. Mason pays a heavier price this time for a more lethal killing machine. He buys the TT-15, a scorpion-shaped mobile weapon with gas-cooled autocannon and armored chassis, but its coolest feature was its targeting technology, which was the same as the one used by the era's Navy drones. Now, that is textbook overkill, but then again, there's no kill like the overkill, right? The machine proves to be ruthless in its work and begins the rat apocalypse. Welcome. I mean, the TT-15 was pure Old Testament, all blood and bones. It wasn't before long that even Mason got scared and worried about the way TT-15 made its kill. Instead of just killing the rats, the metal scorpions seemed to enjoy raining bullets on the rats until only the head remained. Within a short span of time, Mason's yard had a miniature mountain made of rat heads. But the rats seemed quite resourceful and advanced, and with a combined effort, they managed to do some significant damage to the scorpion. However, it wasn't a destroyed completely. Just as it was about to land a final blow on the rest of the rats, Mason arrived with his gun and shot down the advanced piece of rat-killing hardware. After this, Mason pays his respect to the rats for their courage and bravery, before accepting a drink that the rats had made. Ending explained, why does Mason destroy the TT-15? 
It turns out that Mason was put off and disgusted by the brutality with which the TT-15 killed the rats. In fact, he was rather ashamed and guilty because the bloodshed was a thing of his own making. The valiant counteroffensive that the rat army put before the decapitated killing machine moved Mason and made him shoot down his super expensive weapon. In the end, Mason and the rat share a toast while Mason makes a final phone call which ensures the viewer that Mason wasn't after the rats anymore. Hello, this is Mason. <laughs> Aye, that's right, that one. Yeah. I just need to cancel that check. In the end, it was empathy that won. The good old farmer could see the valor and determination of the rats holding their ground and fighting against all odds. I mean, they were just trying to survive in a place that they considered their homeland. This was not very different from several real-life events from the pages of history when one superior nation attacked another. Although the barn officially belonged to Mason, but the rats were its denizens too. What I mean is, can you say that a bird that builds nests in your backyard tree is not its resident? All in all, the episode was a beautiful take on anti-war causes and deserves due respect. That was all in this video, but do check out our other videos on the third season of Love, Death, and Robots. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.